we were pretty much together a lot. We would just pick on each other and fight like normal brother, which was totally fine with me. It, it just made just made our childhood fun, but now we're just like super close. Like, if my parents left, I wouldn't mind if he took care of me because he would do a good job. I was a huge Michigan State basketball fan as a kid. My sister played here from 2012 through 2016. They went to the tournament all four years. That was a lot of fun, too. I would come to all her games. I grew up in a sports family. We're going to film the opening kickoff, and Michigan State is receiving. Michigan is kicking. I just remember my mom would always try to treat my brother like he was a normal, able-bodied kid, even though from the time he was two, they kind of knew he was a little bit different. She let us be and tried to make us grow up like normal brothers did, and I feel like that really helped us because we're still close to this day. They got along great, and they fought great. As they began to go into elementary school and junior high, they found a bond through video games. I think it helped Mike learn empathy towards people and the way he had to take a step back and help Mitch on certain things throughout the day, throughout school. Mitch was always the older brother, but Mike would always look out for him as the younger brother too. My brother, I believe he was two and a half, was diagnosed with Duchenne muscular dystrophy. It's a genetic disorder, and I believe it affects one in 3,500 boys. Basically from the time in fourth grade, he's been paraplegic. My mom first noticed because I was able to like run and get into the car when I was like probably two years old. My brother was three and he wasn't able to like just pop up into the car. My mom was like, that's pretty odd. And so she brought him in and he got diagnosed and it was kind of like a whirlwind for our family. And that's when we started Mitchell's Run was in 2000. After the shock wore off of the diagnosis, Sandy and I both realized that, hey, we, we really want to do something. How can we help and be supportive and how can we help find a cure for Duchenne muscular dystrophy? We decided to do this 5K road race and I think the first year we did it, we had about 300 participants and we were thrilled. And over the years, we grew it to nearly 2,000 participants and done it for 22 straight years now. This allowed more people to learn about Duchenne and over the course of 23 years, we have raised over 1.5 million. And ultimately, we're hoping to raise the funds to find a cure. And that's what our objective is, and we're going to keep doing it until we hit that goal. As we get set for the NCAA Division II National Championship game, the Ferris State Bulldogs seeking the first national title here. In I went to Ferris State from 2016 through 2021. Just my whole time there was absolutely amazing. I mean, we won the GLIAC probably tournament and league, regular season league, a total of five or six times, which was crazy. And we actually won the national championship in 2018. We were 38 and one. So we did a lot of winning at Ferris. And then in 2018, my coach Andy Bronkema actually brought it up to me and thought of an idea to put Mitch on our team as like an honorary team member. So we basically did like a letter of intent day for Mitch at Mitchell's Run. Coach Brockema has a really interesting philosophy that everybody can bring value to an organization. And he sensed with Mitchell that Mitchell could bring something to that organization or to that program that, that they didn't have. And he recognized really quickly Mitchell's passion for basketball and for Ferris State and how much Mitch really wanted to see the, the team be successful. And Bronx would feed off that. And he just gravitated to Mitchell and they became quite close. And Coach Bronkham has been a big supporter of Mitchell over the years. Mitch can teach you a lot about life, keeping a good attitude, and just appreciating what you do have. To see him overcome and attack life every day and the things he has to do just to prepare for a normal day, you know, it's pretty amazing. So keeps things in perspective for us. He would come to probably one practice a week and then he would be on our sideline for every single game. That led into the NCAA tournament that year. We got really sick at that point in time. The first day he was able to come out of the hospital after he got a feeding tube and a trach put in was our Sweet 16 game. And that was the first time he was able to leave the house. It sent us to the Elite Eight. The first person to get the trophy was me and my brother. So that was a really cool moment for my family and I. I was never really to like bond with my brother like athletically. It would have to be over different stuff, but he just didn't really know what the process of like getting ready for a game was like. So it was just cool how he was able to like 
kind of take a look inside what I do every day. And I thought that was just a super cool experience for him. It's just nice just to be in a locker room because I've never had that before. It was amazing just to be with him and I was right there watching him. Day before the national championship, we had to like tell everybody who we were playing for. And I told the team I was playing for my brother and I said, just to kind of put you guys at ease, just know if Mitch airballed two game-winning free throws in the national championship game on live TV, he would probably do it if it meant he could trade places with you. So just know that there's always somebody out there who still looks up to you and wants to be doing what you're doing. And selfishly, I use that all the time. After our season, I got in contact with DJ through Coach Bronx. I had been there for five years at Ferris and I had a great time, but I just was ready to move on and I graduated from Ferris and I got into the MBA program here. I thought it'd be a really good idea. We were huge Michigan State fans, so it was a dream come true to come here. It was kind of a surprise for everyone. No one expected it. His intentions were really to move on academically, but the opportunity then to have one more year of eligibility playing basketball, it couldn't have worked out any better for Mike. Mitch had been an honorary player for the last four years, and just this year, Coach Brockema made him a volunteer assistant. Mitchell's progression within the program has been really fun to watch, too. When we go there, it'll bring back all those memories. It's just going to be so cool to see both of my sons down on the bench areas. I just love going there, too, because it's crazy. I mean, I'm just looking forward to this playing state and seeing how close we can make it. And we create lots of moments as coaches. It's really what it's all about. So when you get a chance to do something that you preach, then you celebrate it. So this is a moment that we're gonna celebrate. We're gonna enjoy it. We're gonna have fun. We're gonna talk about it for the rest of our lives. It's more than basketball. And here we are with a pretty awesome day. Undoubtedly, it will be something I'll always remember, especially because Mitch is on the other side. Here comes Michigan State. Walker may go all the way. He does, bank shot, good. Court to Hogarth. He'll drive down. Bank shot. Good. Malik Hall gets it down the lane. Oh, a beautiful no look pass to Bingham for the slam. Bingham, MSU will get it now. Malik Hall will try three. He got it. That's a nice second chance points there by Michigan State. Ball knocked away. Hauser has it. Break now to Christie. Breaks to the basket. And it's good. And he's fouled. Look out. She was never trailed. Tom Izzo smiling? How no, that? really yeah. with 10 minutes to go in the game? I don't know, yeah. Maybe the Michael Peterson watch should start to begin. Cool moment now, Michael Peterson checking in for Michigan State. The brother of Mitch, the transfer from Ferris State, spent his last four years there and grad transferred to MSU. Great to see him in. Peterson for three. Oh, and Marble had a chance and a put back. Both of them close. Brooks left over for three. Got it. Oh, nice looking shot from the left wing by Brooks. Got a final from East Lansing. It's Michigan State 92 and Ferris State 58. I'm glad uh, Coach Izzo gave me the opportunity to get in there for about six minutes, so I expected about two. I wish I would have made that three for him. Literally in an interview, he said I have a shoddy three-point shot, so I guess we proved it.